Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. You may have seen some scary headlines in the media recently about your black plastic cookware. It's time to throw out your black plastic spatula and other black plastic cookware. Black colored plastics used for kitchen utensils and toys have been linked to banned toxic flame retardants. The news stories were covering a paper published in a peer-reviewed journal, Chemosphere. The title is From E-Waste to Living Space, Flame Retardants Contaminating Household Items Add to Concern About Plastic Recycling. I am grateful the authors made their paper open access because it allows anyone to read the paper and it helps them spread the message. On the flip side, this also comes with additional scrutiny that anyone can look over the analysis and look for potential errors. So what did the authors do? They actually went to stores and purchased black plastic kitchen utensils, storage containers, and other household items that contain black plastics. They found that many of these contain an alarming concentration of flame retardants, which have no business in products that do not involve flame retardancy. These flame retardants shouldn't be in the plastics at all. So how are flame retardants ending up in our kitchen utensils? The authors think the data is suggestive of the following path. Flame retardants are commonly used in electronic products because they have an intentional purpose of preventing fires. When this e-waste is recycled, it is possible that it is contaminating the other plastics that are used for purposes that don't need flame retardancy. Now, if black plastic kitchen utensils and storage containers do contain toxic chemicals, it is not hard to see where the danger will come from there. If you're cooking with these utensils or storage containers under high heat, these particular toxic chemicals may end up coming into the human body. The authors do an estimated calculation that one particular flame retardant, BDE-209, could end up with an estimated contamination of 34,700 nanograms per day. So one then wonders, how safe is this amount? Is it something that's known to be a risky level? The authors bring up an EPA reference intake of 7,000 nanograms per kilogram day. Using an average adult of 60 kilograms mass, we multiply these numbers together and the authors conclude a reference safe intake of 42,000 nanograms per day. So let's take a look at just these numbers. On the one hand, the authors estimate a contamination of 34,700 nanograms per day, and they say the reference intake is 42,000 nanograms per day. So they conclude that the estimated daily intake would approach the daily reference dose of 42,000 nanograms per day. It seems quite alarming that the plastics we're using could actually give us a lot of toxic chemicals, which would be approaching what they say is the safe amount. But the analysis just has one huge math mistake. Let's take a look at the numbers again. We have 7,000 times 60 is equal to 42,000. But wait a minute, this is not correct. 7,000 times 60 is equal to 420,000. Somehow, the authors missed a zero in the calculation, and this was also missed during peer review, and no one from the media on the first round looked through the numbers and caught this error. But since this paper was open access, anyone could try to analyze the paper. The YouTuber Adam Ragusia actually looked at the paper closely, and he found this arithmetic error, and he, in fact, emailed the authors about it. There were others in the media who also caught this error and saw there was an arithmetic problem with this calculation. So news eventually spread and there were headlines saying that this study did have an error. To the author's credit, they did post an addendum and they were admitting that they made an arithmetic error and the correct value should have actually been 420,000 nanograms per day. So if the reference intake is 420,000 nanograms per day, what does that mean? It means that their estimated contamination is not approaching the limit 
but it is rather an order of magnitude lower. It would be less than 10% of the reference safe intake. So by just these numbers, one might think the contamination is much lower than the paper initially thought. So that's good news that perhaps plastics are safer than was initially said by these headlines. On the other hand, I do think the paper's main point that e-waste might be contaminating kitchen utensils and storage containers, this still is a very alarming phenomenon and there should be government regulation and oversight to see whether any flame retardants from e-waste are ending up in products that don't need any flame retardancy at all. This type of recycling contamination is still a big concern. Another point I found quite interesting is that the headlines were very easy to believe because already many people are thinking about ditching black plastic utensils. I see a lot of people trying to go to stainless steel, copper, or wooden utensils. That's certainly your choice. As they say, mind your decisions. But we should still get the numbers correct when we're doing our analysis. It is surprising this type of error made it into a peer-reviewed paper. This type of error is actually the kind of thing I would expect on social media. So here's a tweet from a few years ago. Bloomberg spent 500 million on ads. The US population is 327 million. He could have given each American $1 million and still have money left over. I feel like a million dollar check would be a life-changing amount for most people. Yet he wasted it all on ads and still lost. The tweet even made its way onto a newscast. And the social media reaction to this viral tweet was strong and swift. Of course the calculation is incorrect. If you take 500 million divided by 327 million, you end up with only about 1.5. You don't end up with $1 million for each American. You only end up with $1.5 for each American. Now, even though the tweet was deleted and the mistake was acknowledged, people still harped on the mistake and made many personal attacks. I recommend you read this piece in Glamour about how the mistake actually almost ruined this person's life. I don't think we should be math shaming people for making a calculation mistake. Anyone can make a mistake. In my opinion, the problem comes when a mistake is there and people won't acknowledge the mistake and they stubbornly stand by it. Because it is not the mistake alone that is the problem. It is the refusal to admit that something is wrong, which is what will contaminate our thinking and our decision making. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.